Senator Roberts. Thank you, Mr. President. As a servant to the people of Queensland and Australia, I see and note that Australian politics has been seduced and sometimes conned into endorsing policies aiming at decarbonising and consequently deindustrializing our whole economy by 2050. Climate claims now push policies to cut the human use of vital hydrocarbon fuels like natural gas, coal and oil. At the core is the claim that carbon dioxide from burning those fuels is warming our planet and that warming is a danger to humans and to our planet. Politicians have the highest duty of care to base all policies on rigorous scientific evidence especially policies that bring about radical change with severe consequences for people's livelihoods and lifestyle. Expensive policies need justification with impacts specified and quantified before implement implementation. And this can only be achieved when based on solid data as scientific evidence and that proves causation. Climate policies are decimating our nation's productive capacity, economic sovereignty and economic resilience. And we are on the slide from independence to dependence on other nations. Climate policies and renewable subsidies are already costing households an extra $13 billion per year in excess electricity charges. That's an extra $1,300 per household per Australian household. High electricity prices are dismantling our productive economy and exporting jobs overseas. Ridiculous electricity prices are suffocating manufacturing, agriculture, small and large businesses. Energy intensive industries and value adding processing of food and minerals are moving to countries with cheap energy. Australia is a, CSIRO is Australia's national research institution, and as the people's representatives, we need to have unequivocal re confidence in the quality of its research, scientific process, and scientific evidence. So I examined the CSIRO, cross examined them, held them accountable. We need to know that CSIRO is deeply committed to due diligence, knowing that its work forms the basis of wide-ranging policy decisions. With more, than a with more than a decade of research and analysis and of questioning experts worldwide, I questioned the CSIRO and I found CSIRO, in terms of climate research, did not meet the high standards we expect of what was our premier research institution. I shared the CSIRO's presentations and my conclusions and observations with 17 international climate scientists who concluded that the CSIRO lacked the evidence necessary to justify any government policy. During our examination of CSIRO on its so-called evidence, used politically to justify current climate policies, the following key climate themes emerged. CSIRO admitted that it has never stated that carbon dioxide from human activity is dangerous. Who did, we asked them? Well, you'll have to ask the politicians. So why have we got the policies that we have? There's no basis, there's no danger. CSIRO secondly admitted that temperatures today are not unprecedented. So that means we didn't cause them. Number three, CSIRO relies upon unvalidated models that give unverified and erroneous projections as evidence, confirming that it lacks empirical scientific evidence. They have no evidence for this. CSIRO has never quantified any specific impact of carbon dioxide from human activity. So there's no basis for policy. CSIRO admits to not doing due diligence on reports and data from external ag agencies. They just swallow it. CSIRO relied on discredited and poor quality papers on temperature and carbon dioxide. CSIRO withdrew discredited papers that it gave to us that it had cited as, as evidence of unprecedented rate of temperature change and then failed to provide supporting empirical evidence. CSIRO revealed little understanding of the papers it cited as evidence. It even cited papers that contradict each other. CSIRO allows politicians and journalists to misrepresent CSIRO science without correction. CSIRO misled parliament. The onus, therefore, is now on the federal parliament to scrap climate policies and un unless and until CSIRO can provide accurate, repeatable and verifiable empirical scientific evidence within a logic scientific framework that proves carbon dioxide from human activity detrimentally affects vari climate variability and needs to be cut. Further, the proposed cuts need to be specified in terms of the amount, the impact and the effects together with the costs of making and of not making those cuts. How else can we justify these severe costly cuts that people in this chamber are inflicting on everyday Australians right around the country and their future? How else can we measure progress? How else can we ensure effectiveness? Thank you, Mr. President.